Hi, Mark from Skywagon University. Gonna have a look at this 1997 RV6A. Okay, so here we are with the RV6A. I don't know much about RVs. This one is a 1997 RV6A. So because I don't know much about them, I've literally got a cheat sheet here for this one. So they first flew in 1985, and it was the first time after the RV4 where they were, tan they were side by side. The RV4 was tandem, one in front of the other, and this is side by side, and the first time it was a nose wheel. People didn't want to embark on a big year-long build of a plane and then find they couldn't fly it because they don't fly tail draggers, even though as a tail dragger they're actually pretty good, easy, docile tail draggers to fly. So the RV6 came out with the A with the nose wheel, which makes it unbelievably simple. The other thing they did was the first RV6s had a, a canopy that hinged here and opened up. And if the plane were upside down, it's very difficult to get out. And also, taxiing it with it open, so that in a hot day and hot weather, would be difficult too, because it's a big fragile thing sticking up in midair. So they designed the sliding canopy, very similar to the Tiger that we just did, but amazingly nice to operate. I mean, look at that. An excellent side-by-side -side sli And so when you're, you can't fly it open, but you can taxi around with it just with a bit of a vent like a window because with a bubble canopy you're going to get a lot of heat from the sun on the ground before you take off before you've got air vents and they've also got a little shade in here on a rail you can slide forward so there isn't direct heat from above van the designer was worried that when he made a side by side it would be much slower than the tandem plane and was found out that when this was test flown in 1985, it was three miles an hour slower than the tandem plane. Same wing, same tail, same engines, but faster, three miles an hour, who cares? But a much bigger market with the nose wheel. So they could have a four cylinder like homings. There could be 320s at 150 horse, 160 horse, 180 horse, and the 180 horse is the 360. So this one, it's best with the 360. Um, this one has got an O360 carbureted 180 horsepower Lycoming in it. So the same engine as it would be in a Piper Archer or um, an early Cardinal. It's a very reliable experimental kit plane and very popular engines. But in a plane this small and light, very fast and efficient. So wingspan is 23 feet. And as a comparison, my Mooney or 182, 36 feet. So this plane is 13 feet narrower. And it's only I mean, length, according to my crib sheet here, is it's only um, 20 feet long. My Mooney, which is short, is 22 feet long. So it's, and low, it's like a six foot high on the top of the tail, and the tail draggers are even less because they're on the ground. So if you fill a hangar with planes, there's still room for an RV in it because they're so narrow and short and maneuverable on the ground. So talking about that, the nose wheel that's on them is free castering just like on a Tiger. So if I were to push it sideways, it would just cast around to 90 degrees. So it's differential braking for steering, which would be the same in the tail dragger, because the tail dragger obviously has got no nose wheel. So fuel capacity is 38 gallons, two tanks, very conventional, one on each side, left, right, both off on the selector. So 38 gallons, and it burns nine gallons an hour. So you can see the range, I've got exact numbers here, is fairly substantial at this speed. Um, useful load, empty weight's like 960 pounds, and the gross weight's about 1,600 pounds. So there's about a 600 pound useful load with 38 times six pounds being used up by fuel. So two seats, and it's got a baggage area. The RV4s didn't. So I mean, the seat tips forward, though that wouldn't be how you access it. You access it over the top down here, but you can see in there, there's an area there that you could put some light bags and store headsets and things like that, which is much better than the earlier models. They're still small though, but they're small for a reason. They're small because they're fast and efficient. So rather than memorize all these numbers, I'm just going to read a few specifics uh, relevant to the differences between the RV6, the tail dragger, which I'll call the tail dragger, and this, I'll just say to this plane. So this plane is two miles an hour, three, two or three miles an hour slower than the tail dragger. The rate of climb on the tail dragger is 1790 feet per minute. That's impressive. And the uh, 
rate of climb at gross weight of this plane is 1740. So it's like 40 feet per minute, hardly any difference. The uh, landing distance, 500 feet on both. Takeoff distance, 475 feet on the tail dragger, 485 on the nose wheel. I don't know why a nose wheel makes you land longer. The range of the tail dragger, 720 statute miles. And this plane, 705. Nose wheel costs you five, 15 miles. So enough of this, enough of the cheat sheets, let's fly the plane. So here's the panel of it. Very, very well equipped IFR. A Garmin 175, which is like basically a 650, but without a comm in it. VOR, autopilot, Dynon sky view with synthetic vision. There's the runway. See the runway in the grass and we're off to the side. It knows exactly where we are. Garmin G5, a comm, an iPad for four flight. Aileron trim, controlled on the stick. Elevator trim, controlled on the stick. Barely needs it. The flaps are three stages. That's neutral. One touch is one. Second touch is the next stage. Third touch is the third, and then up is all the way up in one go. So let's um, get her running, see how it flies. Clear. Incredibly well equipped. This, um, the, the, the synthetic vision doesn't know I'm driving up an access road at the airport, so it can't see it. It thinks the runway is there, which it is. We'll see that later. Engine analyzing, map, autopilot, GPS initializing, com, VOR, G5. The owner of this got a is instrument rating. Message. So steering is obviously differential braking and it's very, very responsive. Cool day in March and the sun is beating on me. Pretty nice. But in the summer I can imagine it's warm and you just slide the slider, keep the canopy cracked open till you're ready to go. Okay, run up is cigar. Controls, instruments, gas, attitude, run up. Controls, full and free. Instruments, gas, full as tank. 12 on the left, 6 on the right, 4 on the left. Attitude, run up. 1600 RPM, left mag, right mag, left mag, both, carb heat, radio is on the correct frequency, Fuel pump on. Placerville, uh, RV 677 Delta Sierra is departing on way 23 for a local flight to Placerville. Look at the visibility. Full power. Doesn't waste any time getting off the ground, that's for sure. Look at the runway. Synthetic vision. Incredible. It's a little bit blustery today, so it's going to bob around. So if anybody hasn't been in one of these before, they are incredibly nimble. Very, very nimble. Tiny little inputs. I mean, if I wiggle the stick, it's like bam, bam, bam. Very, very nimble. And in vertical, too. So 
uh, just check the fuel pump off. Fuel pressure staying with the engine driven pump. Doesn't take long to get to altitude, I feel it. We're doing 90 knots. We're at 5,000 feet already. Look at that. There's the view. Okay, RPM back to cruise. 22, 2300, economical. Had to do an aileron roll. You literally just put the nose down to about 120. Pull up. Roll it. All right, over like that. And roll it. All right, over like that. And roll it. All right, over like that. Which was enormously amusing. <laughs> Came up locking about. So it's fixed pitch, of course, you have to manage the RPM per descent. Top speed is 207 miles an hour in the descent. So I'll come around onto the downs in Placerville. It's just like being in a fighter, I tell you. Without the insurance and expense and ownership of a fighter. Placerville, I'll be downstairs over the quarter on a 45, left traffic, 2-3 See how long it was upside down for? I mean, it was three seconds total in the entire roll. Look at that snow. Okay, so we're doing 130 knots. We're on a high down wind. Plasville, 7 Delta Sierra's on the high, left hand wind, 2-3 of Plasville. It's funny being left hand on the stick, right hand on the throttle, because in a cub, you'd be right hand on the stick, left hand on the throttle. I suppose you get used to it. I'm going to go a bit wide, just because I'm high. I'm going to put in one stage flaps. Notice I haven't touched the trim at all. It's almost always in its envelope of trim. There's a little bit I could do. Barely though. Placerville, Delta Sierra, turning left base to final for 2 3 at Placerville, full stop. I put down another stage of flaps. I'm with you about 10 miles to the north, be able to find the field, check it for wind. Okay. Kicked in, but then side kicked around was about five miles to the southeast, uh, pulled up to the Fuel pump on. Toll flaps. Okay, traffic, 10, 6, 1, 0. 5 would be we'll set up for uh, runway 1, 0. Okay. A little bit blustery today. Feet off the brakes. Hold her off. And it's as easy to land as a 172. One, two, three, power back, flaps away. We made it. So in conclusion, a really excellent, fun, fast, nimble, little economical aerobatic plane that you could get your instrument rating in. You just don't have to have a family of six and a dog, but I mean if you want to just go A to B in a hurry, you can't beat these. They are brilliant fun. And the autopilot, you can be hands off for hours with it, pre-selected, doing every kind of approach you don't want to do. Right 
Well, this is Mark from Skywagon University. Thanks very much for watching. We do a series of videos like this. Um, I don't always roll them like I did this, but the owner of it, James West, who very kindly let us do this video, said I could. Um, so if you liked it, click on the subscribe here and there's a little bell for notifications. Thanks very much.